Hello, this is Pat Norris, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church in Lakeview, Arkansas. Uh, and we are going to do our last uh, video for now uh, with Jesus and the law. It's from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Uh, we are, for those in the Lakeview area, we are offering a parking lot service at 3 p.m. Uh, and we listen via the car radio, FM radio, and uh, it's working out well. That's why we're discontinuing the video messages. So let's read the passage. And it's from Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am, come to de I, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the, these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has displayed what a righteous person looks like in the kingdom of heaven, and the sphere of influence they will be. This description he has given and the sphere of influence declared is quite different than what the Pharisees and other religious rulers have embodied. To follow the law was nothing like what was being taught by the Bible teachers of that day. Our point is this, Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but fulfill, demonstrate, and teach the correct interpretation of law, and make it possible to be free from the penalty of the law. So our outline is this, Christ's purpose was to destroy the law, no, fulfill the law, yes. Now the third point is more for us. And that is, exceed the law, it's absolutely necessary. So before we begin to actually look into this passage, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time that you bless each one that's listening. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our first point is, did Jesus come to destroy the law? The answer is no. Let's look at... Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 once again. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Of course, this is Jesus speaking. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To fulfill. So Jesus had or has the authority, continues to have the authority beyond the law of Moses, not in contradiction to it. The Pharisees thought, based on Jesus' disciples eating grain in a field on the Sabbath and Jesus healing on the Sabbath, that he was abandoning the law. Jesus fulfilled the doctrinal teachings of the Old Testament by bringing full revelation. Jesus fulfilled the predictive prophecy of the of the Old Testament by openly demonstrating he is the deliverer. So Jesus is teaching them with these first two points that I have up on the screen now. Jesus fulfilled the doctrinal teachings of the Old Testament by bringing full revelation. He is showing them what the law truly should be like. Uh, how one should follow it correctly. And this is much different than what the Pharisees thought during that day. And then Jesus fulfilled the predictive prophecy of the Old Testament by openly demonstrating he is the deliverer. He fulfilled every prophecy of the Old Testament. That's the amazing thing that we know about Jesus Christ. Every predictive prophecy in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah, Jesus Christ fulfilled that. Um, but not only that, Jesus, Jesus fulfilled the moral and legal demands by fully obeying them and showing what the truth was about the law. He showed how it should be done correctly, 
how you follow the law correctly or keep the law correctly. Jesus fulfilled the penalty of the Old Testament law for us by his death on the cross, taking the penalty we deserve. Now, open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 4, excuse me, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. And it says this, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So Jesus Christ took the even the thought of keeping the law uh, as a means to gain a relationship with God or gain the entrance into heaven, he took that away completely. He took the penalty we deserve that the law said was our, our penalty. He took that away. God, God's acceptance of Jesus Christ's death on the cross or the sacrifice he offered, his substitutionary sacrifice is affirmed by Jesus' resurrection. Jesus completed the righteous requirements of the law. We find that in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. It says there, I do not frustrate the grace of God. This is Paul speaking here. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Then Christ's death on the cross is worthless. Uh, we cannot gain uh, the relationship necessary with God to be in his presence for eternity by keeping the law. We can't do that. What we have to do is accept what Jesus Christ has done for us. So, exceeding the law is necessary. The reason for the law of God still being valuable needs to be clear. Again, let's look in the book of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has, what? Fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love works no ill to his neighbor, therefore law, there, excuse me, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So, uh, we... Uh, today are under a different law. It's the love of Christ. That's our law. God's law is as necessary today as it was when it was written. The, the law tells us what sin is and what separates us from God. It still convicts one of sin. That's an important thing to understand, that it tells someone that they're wrong and that they need a Savior. That's what it does. Now, going back to Matthew chapter 5, once again, uh, we know that in verse 18 it tells us that the law will never go away. Uh, in verse 19, and listen to what it says, verses 19 and 20. Whosoever therefore shall break one of, the, of these least commandments and, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So with the Pharisees, break the commandments and teach others to do the same. That's what they did. On the consequences, the least in the kingdom of heaven. For those that are righteous, true righteous people, uh, do the commandments and teach them correctly, the consequence is great in the kingdom of heaven. So, the law has to be exceeded. The righteousness of the law has to be exceeded. The nitpicking, rule-following, prideful, self-help way to heaven was and is doomed to failure. 
Consequence will not, the consequence is, they will not enter into the kingdom of God. So what is the true righteousness? The true righteousness of God far exceeds what the Pharisees chose to follow and, de and demanded others to follow. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3 and verse, verses 6 through 9. Philippians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. It says there, and this is Paul speaking, who was a tremendous Pharisee before he became a Christian. It says this, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those things I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. Notice what, notice what it says there. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That's the righteousness that we need. We need the righteousness of Christ. And the only way we gain that is by accepting Jesus Christ's sacrifice for our sin. It's for accepting his finished work on the cross. It's accepting that he died, that he was buried, and he rose again, his resurrection is really important in this. It is receiving Christ as Savior and Lord and His righteousness being imputed to our account. Again, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Therefore, as by the offense Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, that would be Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall be many be made righteous. That is what happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and the consequence is entering into the kingdom of God. Now, how good does a person have to be to get to heaven? That is the question. He must be as good as God. He, he, it must be per, he must be perfect to be accepted. God cannot and will not accept anything short of perfection in His presence. It says in Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4, it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in His holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sw sworn deceitfully. For the Christian, his comfort, he is assured in, in, in this new sphere of life, sin does not have power to bring him under the condemnation of the law. The law is finished with us. The law of Christ has been written on our heart. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. The Christian's relationship to the law has been altered through his union with Christ. And this fact, the Apostle Paul proceeds to illustrate as we look in Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul proclaims the principle that the law hath dominion over a man for so long a time as he liveth. That's what it says in verse 1. In verse 2, it gives an illustration. For the woman, woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she'll be called an adulteress. But her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. 
Wherefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Death dissolves all legal ob obligations. We died with Christ on that cross. And when we accept Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, then we no longer are under that burden of the law. The believer, spirit, the believer spiritually dead to the law is not under the dominion of the law uh, anymore. We look at uh, Romans chapter 7, verses 4 through 6 once again. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we are held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. In other words, we don't, we don't gain our fellowship with God by just simply following a set of rules. We have a relationship, not a rule following religion. So, Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but fulfill, demonstrate, teach the correct interpretation of the law, and make it possible to be free from the penalty of the law. Did he come to destroy the law? No. To fulfill? Yes. Did he give us an opportunity to exceed the law? It's necessary. For those that may be watching today that do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, it involves just something very simple, and that is that we need to believe that Jesus Christ came uh, and died and was buried and rose again, taking the penalty for our sin. So the first thing that we need to understand is that we are a sinner in need of a Savior. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that we haven't met God's perfect standard, that we've got a problem. And the only way that that problem can be solved is through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death. That's spiritual death. And that caused us to die physically as well. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, a gift is something that we, uh, that we get that we didn't earn in any way, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ is the one that provides the righteousness that we need to be in God's presence for all eternity. So from there, we need to understand that we need to confess that. We need to, need to tell God that we do believe this. In Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Skipping down to verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you, you need to confess that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. You need to believe that Jesus Christ took the penalty for your sin. And you need to confess that. You need to pray to God and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Accept uh, and tell God that you want to be, uh, that you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord as well. Uh, we want that above all other things because He, because of what He did. That's our response. We follow what He has to say because He has done this for us. Well, I hope you enjoyed the message today.
and I am looking forward to the time when we, uh, when we will just be able to worship any way that we would like, but this is the way it is right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that we have this great message about Jesus and the law, that you would bless each one for having heard it today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.